now that we've learned uh, how to use regression uh, to estimate the causal effects in observational studies, we're going to consider the problem of unobserved confounders. Um, as we discussed, in the observational studies, there's always threat to inference uh, in the form of the presence of unobserved confounders, and so that's something we need to take it seriously. So the first thing I'm going to uh, introduce is uh, something called sensitivity analysis. And I'm going to use a linear regression model uh, as a way to uh, think about how sensitive the results you obtain from the regression to the presence of possible presence of um, unobserved confounders. Okay, so let's consider the following linear regression model. Uh, we have a treatment variable T and a set of pretreatment confounders, observed pretreatment confounders, uh, Xi. Now suppose we have uh, unobserved uh, confounder Ui. Now we're gonna call, I'm going to call this a scalar confounder, but this could be a function of uh, multiple confounders um, and you know, summarized as single variable Ui. Okay. So Ui is something we don't observe. So the question is, what would happen to the coefficient beta um, if we regress uh, y on you know, uh, t and x, but not u, because u is something we don't observe. Uh, we've done this, uh, we've, we thought about this issue uh, earlier in the course where we talked about the use of linear regression in the experimental context. Remember, in the observational studies, we, um, the unconfoundedness assumption basically says once we condition on X, we have a randomized experiment. So in essence, if that assumption is correct and the linear model is appropriate, then the beta should be asymptotically unbiased estimate for the average uh, treatment effect. Now the question is what would happen if we have uh, this unobserved variable UI that's a confounder. Now if we regress, the outcome y on t and x without u, u is uh, the unobserved uh, confounder, the estimated coefficient uh, beta hat is going to have a bias. And the bias is given by this omitted variable bias formula, which I, we covered uh, when we discussed the use of linear regression in the exper with experimental data. So what it says is that beta hat is going to converge to the truth plus the bias term. Bias term is a multiplication of two terms. The first term is the delta. So delta is the coefficient of UI. So th this represents the strength of association uh, between the unobserved variable U and the outcome Y. And the second term is um, the ratio of the covariance and the variance. And it turns out this is uh, a coefficient of, from the another regression. So what is the regression? So the regression is, um, is basically the residual um, of uh, regression of t on x. So regressing the treatment variable on the bunch of covariates. So that this is a ti um, for x. That's a regression um, of, from the regret, the, sorry, the residual from the regression of the treatment assignment on the covariates. And then another regression, which is regressing uh, the unobserved confounder u on x, and then obtaining the residual from that regression. Okay, so what, what, it, what, that, what that does is that it basically the, pushes out the variation due to x. Okay, so the residual uh, from the regression of t on x is whatever the variation of t that's, that cannot be explained by x. And the residual uh, from the regression of u on x is uh, the variation of unobserved confounder u that cannot be accounted for by x. Okay. And then we're going to regress those residuals um, from the u regression on the residual of the t regression. And that coefficient is basically the second term. So what this is, is that um, how much of the variation u is explained by t conditional on x. Okay, so the conditional on x, what is the association between t and u? 
and that's basically the, uh, the second term of this mod, um, multiplication term, the bias formula. Okay, so the first, just to recap, since my explanation is not very good. Uh, so the first time delta is conditional on x and t, how, mu how much there is association between y and u, and the second term is conditional x, how much uh, there is association between t and u. Okay, so this sort of represents, um, it's, it's in line with our intuition that unobserved uh, confounder has a problem, uh, poses a problem for the estimation or causal effects if this u is uh, correlated with y and t, right? Outcome and the treatment assignment conditional on x. And this is exactly what, um, what this formula represents. Now in the randomized experiment, um, the t and the u are uncorrelated. And then if we assume unconfoundedness is true, then t and the u are also uncorrelated uh, conditional on x, okay? So the second term is gonna be zero, hence the bias is gonna be zero, even if the delta isn't zero. Okay, so that's why the under unconfoundedness, the bias goes away. Or in the experiment, the bias goes away as entirely. However, if the u actually exists and the delta is not zero and the u is correlated with t, even conditional on x, then there's gonna be a bias term. Now, what we wanna think about is how big this bias might be. Now, of course, we can always um, specify, you know, the scenario where the delta takes certain value and the regression coefficient, the second term takes a certain value and then multiply those two numbers and that it would represent the bias. But that's really not very intuitive, especially the second part is not really intuitive because it's sort of the regression of these um, imaginary terms. So, so one way to represent this bias term in an intuitive way is to use partial R square uh, formulation. In a recently published article, uh, the author shows that absolute magnitude of the bias estimate is going to be equal to the square root of the product of the three terms. Now, I'm going to explain each term separately. The first term is something called partial R-square. Okay. Partial R-square, as it's written, is the uh, difference between two R-squared, R-squared uh, from the regression of y on u, t, x, so all three variables, minus r square of regression uh, from regression of y on t and x without u. So this difference basically it represents additional variance explained by u, additional variance of y that's explained by u, divided by one minus r square of regression of y um, on t and x. Okay? So this is basically tells you how much, uh, what's the proportion of variance unexplained by t and x, okay? So what this ratio is basically explaining is among the unexplained variance in y, right, that's not explained by t and x, how much y, uh, u, the unobserved value of u, is um, responsible. So this is basically partial R squared. So it tells you how much y and, you know, how much u explains y conditional on t and x. So that partial R square is the first term. The second term is the ratio of the partial R square uh, of T on U. So how much um, of variation in T is explained by U conditional on X. So it's a ratio of those. So the larger this um, a partial R squared is the larger the second term is. So you can see the first and second term um, Basically, uh, you know, the first term corresponds, you know, association between y and u given t and x. The second uh, term corresponds to the association between t and u given x. And the last term is the, the, the ratio of the residual variance. So how much uh, vari variance is left um, after um, regressing y on x and t. And then the denominator is how much variance is left. Uh, left after uh, regressing t on x. Okay, so this is the uh, ratio of the residual variance. And so the, the more unexplained uh, y is, the larger this, uh, this bias is going to be. Interestingly, 
t, uh, the variance of residual variance of t, if that's bigger, that's better because then um, there's a lot more stochasticness uh, in the trivial assignment. Okay, so this is a partial R square formulation. So R square is a little bit um, easier to understand because it's also standardized between zero and one. And so you can always think of it as like, what is the uh, proportion of the variance that's being explained by something? Um, and so this uh, expression will uh, reach to the plot like this, where on the y-axis you have partial R square from regression of y on u uh, given t and x. And then the, uh, on the horizontal axis, you have partial R square from regression of T on uh, U given, um, given X. And then you see the contour plot where the estimate changes depend, depending on how big this, each of these partial R square is. Uh, the blue dotted line is uh, when the both partial R square is exactly, um, exactly the same. And the, uh, um, and so you can see um, how, you know, how these estimates are uh, changes depending on, um, depending on the, um, um, the partial R square. When the most partial R square is exactly zero, that's when the uh, linear regression estimate is, um, uh, that's uh, 1548 uh, dollars in this particular application that you will uh, analyze in class.